Okay, now that my image is printed out and it looks the way I want it to, um, you could double check the size, make sure it's the right height and width. Should be two and one inch, two and a quarter inch wide, and it should be about four inches, just slightly under four inches, technically 3.903 on Photoshop. So I've got my image the size I want. I've got my book tape. I'm gonna pull out a, a piece of tape large enough to cover my entire image. All right, it's about that long. Then cut it. When I set this down, I don't want it to accidentally like st stick in different areas, creating bubbles and things like that. So I start like this, make sure that's lined up vertical with my tiger or whatever image you have. I set it down, I start in the middle, pressing to the outer edges. Once my image is pressed on, free of any air bubbles, I'm going to burnish the outside edge. So basically press it down. I'm gonna use the back of my scissors, but if you have a bone folder or something like that, even better, go ahead and use that. Um, but I basically am sticking the tape onto the paper. I want to stick so well that when I try and peel off the paper, it doesn't peel off my image. Keep in mind, you have to still be careful when peeling off your image. All right. At this point, I could try and rub off the tape. If your tape is too narrow, you have two smaller pieces of tape, make sure that they overlap. You don't wanna stick them next to each other because when you go to rub off the back, they'll just separate. So that's another way of doing that. Um, I cut out my image at this point and I cut right along the edge because this is gonna fit exactly inside one of my uh, pieces of board. So go ahead and cut it out. I'm leaving just a hair of white. You won't see that later on, but it just lets me know that I'm cutting exactly on the edge. I think there's a song about that, living on the edge. Okay, I'm going to cut out my image. All right, I've cut out my image. I need to get off all the paper. Um, in order to do that, I have to get it wet. You can either lick it if you're hungry, or if you're not hungry, um, you can use a water bottle. I spritz the back just a little bit. It's gonna curl, that's okay. Um, but I'm gonna just rub that moisture around. I'm not pressing really hard, just rubbing that moisture around so that it starts to absorb into the paper. If you need to, spritz it again. All right, so now it's wet on the back of this paper. I'm gonna use a paper towel in a minute to dry up my area and clean up some of my mess. All right, so the water is absorbed into the paper. Now I'm going to rub off the back. If I rub too hard, I'm gonna have problems. It's gonna rub off the ink. This ink isn't necessarily super strong onto the tape. Um, depends on the type of printer you use, but the printer I have, um, the ink doesn't stick super well. So I'm lightly rubbing off the paper, um, whenever I go over a really important area, I'm gonna especially rub the paper really light. So like, um, this is his mouth. I want the teeth to show up really well. So I'm not gonna rub too hard on the paper. And what that's doing, it's basically rolling up the paper and leaving just the ink on my image. I'm gonna rotate my paper. I find it easier to roll away from yourself um, rather than towards myself. All right, so if I were to end right here, you would still see a lot of that paper behind it. You can kind of see through it, but I want to see through more. So I'm gonna give it another spritz of water, a couple spritzes, and then I'm gonna 
rub more of this paper off. Remember, I'm being gentle, making sure I don't take the ink off just the paper. It's kind of like those um, fake tattoos, at least the kind I would use when I was a kid. Um, all right, so it's looking pretty good. Being really careful around those eyes. All right, then I just need to get off all the rest of the paper. In a second, I'll show you one that I messed up on a little bit. You know, you always have to practice before you start showing other people how to do stuff. At least that's me. All right, so most of it is off. Every time I go to rub it off, I'm being very gentle, making sure that I don't accidentally take off the ink. And as you flick this off, don't flick it on your neighbors. All right, so it looks pretty good. You got my image there. If you look at the back, you can see it a little better. Um, compare this image to my first image. My first image, I rubbed it too much and it looks terrible. My second image, I just rubbed off as much as I could with keeping the image still on my paper so it looks a lot nicer. All right, so I gotta clean up my area. I'm gonna set this upside down on the shiny side so that it can dry a little bit. Remember, always clean up your area. Do not rub these things onto the floor. Um, otherwise, you'll have a lot of little pieces of paper to pick up, which is not any fun. All right, my image looks good. Oh, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna set that to the side. The goal is to put this image on here. I could, if I wanted to, place it on directly, but that's kind of boring. So I can add other pieces of paper. Maybe I want to be a pink tiger, right? Bring out some of those pink colors behind other pieces, other colors. Um, you might have black and white images, that's okay. Um, black and white even, I sometimes like them more because they stand out more. Um, but let's go ahead and get this image onto a cool surface. So I'm gonna go with pink and a little bit of red, or actually yellow. So I'm just going to tear this paper. Right. Maybe I'll do a couple pieces. Oh yeah, then it looks like tiger stripes. Kind of. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and glue these pieces of paper on a surface. Then I'm going to choose where to put it. Um, for me, I'm going to glue it with this stuff. It's called the Crayola Washable Glue Stick. Um, it's supposed to turn clear, but it doesn't totally turn clear. I'm gonna use a piece of scratch paper to glue this. That way I can glue it down completely, right? So I add glue to my piece of paper. Then I'm gonna carefully place it on my pink paper. Oh, that's good. And I don't even mind if it has a little bit of blue in there. Might look kind of neat. Um, Now, when you're adding a background, you don't have to stick with just paper. You can do this with um, paint, um, different, whatever will look good when you, as a background. 
that's the fun thing about doing a tape transfer is you get more choices um, with the textures and things that are in the background. So I'm going to place it. Uh, I want to. I'm going to place it so that the eyes have yellow in the background. So it's going to go right here. In order to put it on here and for it to stick, I've got to add blue to either here, my surface of the tiger, or the surface of my paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the surface of the tiger. So I set it down. Don't skimp on glue. You wanna make sure this is glued on really well. Um, this tape will have a little bit of stickiness to it, but not enough. So um, if you don't want the glue to show through, or maybe you have glue that doesn't turn clear. Oh, I've got this upside. Yeah, I like that still. Um, what's going to happen is, oh, well, if you don't have glue that turns clear, one thing you can do is just glue the areas that are really dark on your image. That's another little thing that will help. All right, so once I've got that, I need to cut out this image and I wanna leave a pretty big space around, almost like, almost about an inch, I would say, around it. You could, if you wanted, set your ruler up, mark this, I'm doing the width of the ruler around to be more exact. Um, you don't have to do that. You can just guesstimate. So I'm going to just, I think it'll be easier to see the rest of the process if I do it. And then I'm going to cut out, I know it's not totally dry, but I'm going to go ahead and cut out my image. I'm not being perfectly exact. If you want to be exact, that's okay. I guess it's better to be more exact than not very exact. Those of you that are exact are saying exactly. That was my attempt at a joke. All right, so I've got it cut out. Um, if I were to just put this over my piece of paper and then fold it over, I'm gonna have these extra edges. So to prevent the extra pieces of paper, I'm going to cut straight across, but I'm going to leave a little gap away from the corner of my image. So I'm gonna cut it a diagonal. I'm gonna leave a little extra space because when I fold that around, I don't want anything showing on my paper. And I'm gonna do that to all sides. There are tools you can use for this, but we are just going to wing it a little bit. All right, so now place my image. So it's right over, over this. I just wanna make sure it's gonna fit. All right, yep, it will. So now I'm going to glue, I can either glue this or I can glue the back of my paper, put it on to my cardboard. I'm gonna go ahead and glue my paper Remember, each time I'm using a scratch piece of paper so that the glue doesn't get on the table. I want the glue to be only on my paper. And I would start from the center and go to the outer edges. If you go back and forth, you're gonna end up getting glue on the other side. And I want to add lots of glue because I want it to stick really well. So I'll take my image, be careful not to get glue on the other side. Now I'm going to place this image on here. It's not going to be perfectly exact. I've got to turn it around. Then I line this up so that the corners kind of match. And if you put it up to the light, you can kind of see through it. All right, so it's, it's right where I want it. Ooh, it's a little bit not right where I want it. Kind of fold down the edges a little bit to fill it. All right, so it looks good. 
my glue is starting to dry, so I'm gonna get this scratch paper again. This glue dries really fast, which is good and bad. So add some here. And a little trick to this, if I just fold it over, I might get little gaps. So if I press it with my board, like as I'm bending it, I bend it over and then upside down, it's going to stick a little bit better. So this is gonna be my backside edge. Front side is covered. You'll notice right around these bends, I could push it in just a little bit. It might help a little bit with when I bend each edge. We'll go ahead and do this other side. Um, some people will tell you to do it in a certain order. I don't care. I'll just do that. Repeat that same process. Start on the edge, bend it up. Go all the way down. Press it. All right, so it's nice and flat on my image. The back is on really well. Now we're ready to move this onto our book. Yeah. If you're not careful, you will put your book upside down. And then every time you have to have your book upside down for putting stuff in there. So in order to remember which side, before you start gluing this down, I would set your book so that you're ready to place it in the right way. So this would be upside down to me. So I'm gonna turn it this way. Um, this is also the back. I want this to be the front. So I'm gonna move my book. Okay, there, that works. Looks good. Once it's ready to go, I'm going to leave my book here to the side so that, wow, just like a, wants to open up. All right, so I'm gonna leave that here so I know it's ready to go. I'm going to actually glue all of this surface area and then place it down. You could do the opposite. You could glue this surface area and then add it. Actually, I am going to add it on this side. So I'm gonna add it on this side, then press it down. So before I do that, there's this little flap. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue underneath it. Glue that down. Now I want to glue this entire area. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my scratch paper again. Remember, always start from the center and work your way to the outer edges. All right, so now I'm ready to glue this down, line it up. Before I press really hard, I make sure the top and bottom are lined up, left and right are lined up. Then I press it down. Awesome, there's the front of my book. I love it. Then I've got to add a backside. So I'll repeat those exact same steps for the back. One more thing. So this inside edge, it's opened up. We don't want it to do that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue behind here so it sticks like that. Then just along the edge inside here, I'm going to glue that down. So then my book stays open. If I add a bunch of glue in here, then I won't be able to put anything in that pocket. I wanna be able to put stuff in that pocket. So I'm gonna add just a little bit along that edge. You can see just a teeny bit. Glue that down. I also need to glue underneath here. This doesn't matter if I glue large space. So I glue that down. All right, so I've got front of my book. Now I just need to repeat that for the back of my book. And then we'll have 
pretty awesome, actually. When you're done with your glue sticks, make sure you unscrew it, so turn it to the left, and then you put the cap on it. That's not good enough, you have to make sure it clicks. 